Shepherd of our soul, Shepherd of our soul, Savior of our soul, Lover of our soul. We are on the Lord's Most high Father, we thank you, we bless you, we worship you, we exalt your name. We thank you for yet another privilege giving us, O oh God, to come before you, to sit down at your feet, O oh God, to learn from you, to hear from you. Father, it's only a privilege, O oh God. It's not by right, O oh God. Father, O oh God, this night alone, I am persuaded of, O oh God, more than six to seven thousand people have died all over the world. Father, you gave us opportunity to see this day that we may search ourselves again, to look at our yesterday and use it to, oh God, Father, to treat our today, that our tomorrow may be, oh God, better for us. Jesus, speak to me this morning and speak to me. Father, that word, oh God, that will correct me and correct the hearer. Your word, oh God, that will chase Satan far from us. Your word that will chase, oh God, self. Satan and sin far from all that only you will dwell in us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, Lord, Amen. Use my ear and Amen. use my mouth to the Amen. glory of your name alone. Amen. Father, may I not try to paint your word. May I not try to help you or help the Holy Ghost. Father, oh God, you said, Oh liar, we end up in hell. Father, help me, oh God. Help Amen. me speak your word the way you want to speak it to God. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In you, Jesus Christ, mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brethren, this morning we have a message that is titled No Hair Fire. <laughs> Amen. No Hellfire Training Institute. No Hellfire Training Institute. When this message came to me, I said, What is this? And he said, Yes to me. He said, My son, I want you to announce to your children, to the children, that there is no institute all over the world where they can train you how to prepare for hell. Evil Satan cannot prepare anyone of when you get to this how you can bear the pain of hell. There can never be institute on earth here, not primary institute, secondary institute, where they can train you how to prepare yourself for hell. In case you get to hell, this is how you can bear the pain. It's not anywhere. So I'm here to announce my, to myself this morning. And to announce to yourself, no matter how you get prepared for hell, you can never be used to hell when you get there. And hell fire is not a place you should train yourself for. Say, and let me just leave it sin. In case I get there, at least eh, I will be able to bear it. Sister, brother, you will not be able to bear the pain of hell. No one can train you against the time of hell. Against your hell fire. No, it is not done. And no matter what you have heard about hell, that is just nothing compared to what is happening there. No matter the picture they have shown to you, no matter the dream you have seen about hell, it's nothing, 
it can never be compared to the reality of hell. I remember the little God that showed to me about hell. I remember how all these killers were killing people. And I begin to imagine, say, God, what kind of evil these people are doing? And he said to me, say, watch. And I saw the leader, how he was wasting people. He said, watch. And all of a sudden, I saw one of the group that were killing people killed the leader. Oh. As he killed him, immediately, the spirit, the, the spirit left him. And as he left him, I saw hell. That's why it was, it's called the pit of hell. When you say pit of something, that means hell is inside a pit. Maybe you say the pit of sand. The pit of sand. You are saying there is sand in that pit. The pit of hell. Hell, hell itself rests up from the pit. I came to the young man and grabbed him. I took the, the, the boy, shouted and cried. I took him to hell. And the priest said to me, that if anybody is doing evil, don't cry over the evil he's doing. Cry over what he will experience when he dies. The evil he's doing is not evil. What matters what matter is what is going to what is going to pass through when he die? So what am I trying to say this morning? I don't know the evil you are doing. I don't know the sin you are committing. Taking no problem. And they said uh, it, they, they, they are up some prisons in hell. They are prison for a liar. They are prison for this. Uh, because that may be the prison of those who keep marriage will be simple. There's no simple prison in hell. There's nowhere in hell that people are laughing. Nowhere in hell that people are smiling. Just the way that young man cried into hell, if you allow yourself to lie in the that's why you cry and cry forever. So my question to myself now is this. The same question is applicable to you. What is that thing taking you to hell and you are looking at it? What is that thing that you are doing that is gradually sending to hell, and you are watching it. We are not refusing that thing from sending to hell. Brothers and sisters, I've come to pronounce to you. If that thing finally succeeds of sending to hell, you forever regret your life. The Bible told us in Revelation chapter 14, verse 10, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. The same. You that align you, yourself to be sent to hell by that sin. He said, you will drink the wrath of God in hell. And the, the wine of the wrath of God is not palatable. It's not a sweet wine. You shall drink the wrath of God, which is poured out with mixture into the cup of his indignation. Into the cup of indignation. Hell is a place where the anger of God is poured into every second. Into his indignation, and, his, and he shall be tormented. I'm here to tell you what you're about to experience, woman, man, whoever you are, dwelling in sin, and uh, you are not repenting. He said, I should tell you, and uh, you shall be tormented with the, with the fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels. And in the presence of the Lamb, they will watch you tormented day and night. You will become a cinema to angels. You become a cinema. Jesus Christ is crying over your sin now. And you are happy over it. No problem. A time is coming, he'll be watching you tormented day and night. And the torment of hell is a torment of every second. By second bill. The Bible said in this level of Revelation 14, and uh, the smoke, my sister, please, I'm begging you. I'm begging myself. Throughout the night, I was lamenting. Father, locate that thing that is sending me to hell. I don't want to go there. Please, Lord, have mercy upon me. Say, and, verse 11, and the smoke of that torment, 
ascended up forever and ever. The smoke that will be coming out of your intestines. Maybe you don't know. If you die in sin, just the way you are on earth here, that is how you will be in hell. There's no difference. It's even more painful when the soul is burning. The soul is even more fragile. But let me tell you something. A time is coming, both your body left on earth here and your soul will be united together in the hell. Hell and lake of fire will burn you at the same time. And they, are, and they have no rest. And they have no rest day and night. Day or night. Your parents that die in sin. See, that day they breathe their last breath. They have never rested. They're afraid that that is sin those days. I'm yet to announce to you. See, the day your friend breath the last breath. See, today and forever, they will never have rest. And if you die in your sin too, as you close your eyes and open it to hell, from that very day, you will never, ever have rest again. And I'm here to ask you this question. Look, what is that that is sending you to hell? You better locate it. If you don't know, ah, the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, open my eyes to see that thing driving me to hell. You will cry day and night. He said, Who worship the beast and his image? And whosoever respect the mark of his name. How do you worship the beast and his image? It's not only when the mark of the beast comes. Whenever you sin against God, you are serving the devil. Can't you understand? It's not only the, the red sea sees in your head. Anytime we see, at that moment, we have just worshipped the devil. So, we must stop worshipping the devil. If we don't want to drink out of the cup of the fearless indignation of the Lord. The Bible told us in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 14, Therefore, has he enlarged himself, Hell enlarged herself, waiting for who? For you, a dwelling is sin. Hell is not enlarging itself for that goat, for that dog on the street. It's for you that refuse to repent of your sin. And you are pretending to say you are born again, but you are still committing little sin. You are still dwelling in iniquity. I'm here to announce to you, you are not doing anybody. You are doing your own self. You know, a time will come. You will cry, and cry, a cry, your tongue will be as long as electric pole. You better be careful. I better be careful. We better be careful. Hell is like a womb. It's waiting for you. Whenever we sin, hell will laugh. Wah, 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 wah. You are coming. Whenever we do anything against the holy name Jesus Christ, in our iniquity, we make hell to laugh. And it's laughing at you. It's laughing at our foolishness, at our stupidity. I have come to understand we can actually avoid sinning. Before we do anything, we, we know what we're about to do. We know what we're about to do. I say, sin. You know what you're about to hurt me. I know when I'm about to hurt you. Don't I know that I'm keeping marriage to somebody? I should know. When, if I want to steal, I must know this thing I want to call it is not my own. Why don't I remove my hand from it? Whenever I'm angry with sister Dupe, or whenever I'm angry with my wife, I should understand I am angry with this woman. Why don't I say, Holy Ghost, help me here? There's nothing a man do that is not preconceived in the heart. You know, I know when we're about to commit sin, and whenever we commit that sin, we have just made that act a driver driving us to hell. And if peradventure you allow that driver to drive you into there, he can never drive you away. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I should announce to all this morning, my people, though I am crying every day, a time is coming, I will stop crying over you. I'm only crying now because you are still on earth here. I still have hope of collecting you back. But if you allow yourself 
to jump into a place of hopelessness. A place, my sisters, come, let me tell let me you somebody here. Don't say because people are going to hell and come back. <laughs> Those people are programmed for that in the end time ministry of God. That is what they are programmed for. If you allow yourself to fall in there, you will be there forever. If you are not destined for such movement, for, for people that God are programmed to you at this end time, to take them to hell, it don't take everybody to hell that way. They are programmed for that. If you are not among them, you are thinking if you die in sin. And a brother sister so look back now. And one brother go there. When that brother go there, uh, on that very day, almost 10,000 people jump in there. They are still there now. If you allow yourself to jump into hell, you will remain in hell forever. I put a message one day. Whatever enter hell is equal to hell. Whatever goes to hell, remain in hell. If you enter hell, you will remain here, and you will never, ever see smile again. I ask you again, what is that thing dragging you to hell, petty to hell, and you are happy about it? You are in a church where the pastor is petty like a dog, sending it to hell, petty you and put a chain in your neck and drag it to hell. And I say, da- yeah, daddy, hey, you wear trousers to church. And pastor is telling you, you look good in your trouser. You are saying, yes, daddy. You have just put chain on your neck. Dry. And today, I've come to see many people. They are like dogs that love their chain. That man is putting chain on your neck. And you are foolishly following him to hell. I pity you. You better remove that chain from your neck now. That Sin you are committing is a chain on your neck. Why are you love your chain? Are you a slave? Whoever that commits sin is a slave to sin. Can't you understand? The Bible told us in Mark chapter 9, 43 to 48, it said, Whatever you know is dragged to hell. If it's your, I will paraphrase, if it's your leg that is put you to hell. Call, look for Montessor. Cut that leg off. It's better you enter the kingdom of God with one leg. As you get there, we tell Peter, hey, hey, he says, sir, tell the angel to give him a, a glorious leg. It's better that you go into the pit of hell with your body completed. And when you get there, demons have the program. You cut your leg and throw it away. You see your head be thrown away. And the hell will be coming back again. Oh, my people, please, please let us not go to hell. You will not enjoy it. Demons in hell, they are so wicked. The more you beg them, the more they are doing evil to you. You cannot beg them. Let me just read this one. You don't think I am I am just making this here. Verse 43. And if the hand of a D cut it off, meaning if the hand cause you to sin, please cut the hand off. It is better for thee to enter into life, into heaven, mean thee, that have to hate to go into hell, into the, into the fire that never shall be quenched. I pity your darkness, saying there is no hell. This is Christ speaking, telling you that place you are going to, the fire there will never be quenched. Jesus Christ spoke about hell more than heaven. You know why? He knows if you miss hell, you will enter heaven. He said in verse 44, there the one died not, the one in hell. I've had opportunity by grace to see the woman in hell. The woman in hell, they only call them one. The woman in hell, some of them are bigger than this farm. For the harvest of me, if I am, if I am exaggerating. The one in hell, they are so big. If they enter from the inside, they can bust your head open. They are cool one, but their teeth is stronger than the teeth of, teeth of lion. You, you will not enjoy hell. Sister, I am not, I'm not here just to put fear in you. I'm telling the reality. No matter how I describe it, I can never describe it enough. It's more than what I am saying. Don't go there. Don't go there. There is no institute that can train you of how to prepare yourself for hell. It's not done. Verse 45. And if thy foot of thee, cut it off. 
it is better for thee to enter half into hell, I mean, into life, than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that ever shall be, that never shall be quenched. Where their one died not, and their fire is not quenched. The creator of hell is telling you how hell looks like. The only one that can describe hell is the one describing hell to us now, and we are still playing over such. Jesus is telling you how hell looks like that the one day can never die. They are programmed to live forever. The serpent in hell can never die. They are programmed to live forever. I saw on Facebook a sister that was on bed, a black girl. That place should be in Benin. She was on the hospital bed. They opened her, her woman, her woman part. Serpent was go, coming out and going in. Life. The doctors were watching. Nobody can kill the serpent. Maybe she involved herself in one thing or the other. Say, God, what is this? Life. She was lying down on bed like somebody wants to give birth. The serpent will come out very long. Play and play and play and play and come in again. Inside you might be worried about hell. If that can happen life on earth here, I tell you, hell, hell is not a place to go. Let us not go there. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Your eyes of faith, pluck it off. It's better you are bled now. And we enter the kingdom of God. To give you a glorious eyes that because of sin you allow your eyes to take you to hell if it's that makeup that will take you to hell you better stop making up now let your face be as it is you know why the lord know the kind of face he gives to you if you go to, if you go if you die without your original face i pity you to die with trouser as a woman, I pity you. To die with sin in your life, I pity you. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. So, so therefore, the Lord is telling us now, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, Fear not them which kill the body. Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him, fear him, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So those who are now that their body is on, is on the ground, they are here. Their body must unite with them on the last day. The Lord, the word of God must be fulfilled. He have told them, soul and body must go to hell. Of anyone that enter there with sin. So if I were you, whatever sin you are committing, whatever sin you know that is in you, you better stop it now. Whatever sin I am committing, that after all this preaching, waking up in the morning, putting my ears in the in the mouth of God in the night, for I speak to me to tell your children, and at the end, God. Forbid. Let us be watchful. Let us be careful. Let us not be careless. Let us not, not drag ourselves into hell. We can actually make heaven. It's possible. People are in heaven. Amen. Going to heaven is possible. Amen. It's a matter of saying sin over to you. Father, help me. We will help you. Amen. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, says in Matthew 25, verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, the sinners, the unrepentant sinner. Then shall he say of the careless. You know what you are doing is a sin. You are prolonging the day of your confession of your repentance. <laughs> do something about yourself now. 
that one you are thinking is it does not matter do something about it now before it wraps you and send it to hell hell is laughing for you. hell is laughing because you have not done that restitution it's laughing at you satan knows what is carried to hell and you also know it you know what you are doing i know myself as my wife always say, everybody knows themselves. You don't want to know yourself anymore? You know yourself. You know that thing you should deal with. You know that thing that, 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 that is dragging you to hell. Ask God to help you. Now that you are saying that there's grace to help. The Lord is ready to help you fight that sin. If it has become a habit to you, Cry to God, Father, deliver me before this thing will send me to hell. But if you are enjoying it, no problem. You will only enjoy it for some minutes, for some time. Not on earth here is forever. Nothing on earth here that lasts forever. But where you are going to, either heaven or hell, is for eternity. The rest of your life, you will spend it there. So which one should you work hard for? Is it on earth here? You are working hard to dwell in iniquity. You will stay on the chair and make up for three hours. No problem. Satan is laughing at you. You have done all this makeup for you to come to hell for. You have yeah, now they are saying that there is a trouser for women. They go and do it very big leg, no problem. For women, no problem. Satan knows he have done it to take it to hell. You can see vision. You can prophesy. You can preach. Satan will not stop you from doing those things as long as he knows you are coming to hell. Preach in your iniquity. Preach in your sin. Make up and do everything and say, Jesus loves you. He loves them, no problem. But what about you? You are on your way to where you are dragging people away from. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Depart from me. You cursed. You cursed into everlasting fire. You are cursed, not just cast down. Cursed into everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angel. Hell was originally made for Satan. The anger of God was, was, was what he used to create hell. And whoever entered hell had just entered the, the peak of God's anger. Let us not go there, people of God. Let us not go there. Connect it there and let, let us be wise. Ask yourself, what are you actually collecting for? What do you need again? You are able to eat and drink. It's enough. Why will you go to her because you must do the house? Why will you go to her because you must buy a car? Why will you go to her because you want people to know you? Why would there's nothing on earth here that's worth going to her for? I have not seen anything. So such out that thing is driving you to hell. I have the Lord to help you. And the Lord will help you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I will stop here. The, the word is enough for the wise. We get Amen. one. Read Matthew 25, verse 41. Matthew 25, 41. Revelation 21, 8. Revelation 21.8, Matthew 25.46, Matthew 25.46, Revelation 20.10-15, Revelation 10, Revelation 20.10-15. If it's too much, you will not study it, I, 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 know, I know my people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Go and uh, Take care of that one. The word is enough for you and I. Amen. Are you here? You're not born again. I want you to jump out, out of that 
way of heaven. Bring it. Today is your day. Amen. Tomorrow will never come for you anymore. Say after me, if you want to come out of darkness. Say, Lord Jesus, I've heard your word. Thank you. I recognized mm -hmm. that I was on my way to hell. Mm -hmm. But this morning, mm -hmm. I would heard the word. I've decided to come out of that vehicle. It was conveying me to hell. Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. Forgive me all my sin. Mm -hmm. Satan, I renounce you today. I come out of the out, out of the chain and darkness you have placed me for so long. Mm -hmm. Jesus, please take my name away from the book of death. Mm -hmm. I write it in the book of life. Mm -hmm. I accept you to the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. as my Lord and personal Savior. Come into my life. Come and dwell in me. I am born again today. All things have passed away and all things have become new. Thank you, Father, for saving my soul. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Amen. So if you have confessed this confession, the Lord Jesus Christ Almighty is rejoicing over your soul. I am also rejoicing. And those of us on this mountain who are, who are already on the race before you, we are all rejoicing. And I pray with you. Father, I thank you. I bless you. I worship you. I exalt your name of God because you have poured out your might for us again this morning. Father, you don't want any of us to go to, go to hell. Father, your word have healed some souls this morning. But as me that have confessed you this morning, and those who will confess you after what changed over anywhere, they will do it. Come across and come in contact with this message. I ask for grace, O oh God. I ask for strength, O oh God, to hold on to the end, O oh God. The grace to hate sin with passion, release it upon them, O oh God. The power to resist everything that will be calling their attention, give it to them, O oh God, to, to, to start strong to the end of time. Help me, O oh God, that I've preached this message. Help everyone, O oh God, that I've heard it. Let this message you God not be used against us on the last day. They will not experience hell where we are asking people not to go on the last day in the name of Jesus Christ. Above Amen. All, let your mercy and your grace stand for us on that day as we are striving day and night. In Jesus Christ, mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.